welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in with me today. Going to do a quick video on Matthew 13, Isaiah 6, and Acts 28. I want to show you kind of how these things tie in together. Jesus is the one that ties them in. He's been um, teaching and preaching, and he has a conversation with his disciples here about parables. And I want to pick up in Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So his disciples understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because God gave it to them. Remember when um, Jesus said that one time, who do people say I am? And the disciples answered, some say um, Elijah, some say John the Baptist or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So this is uh, sovereign salvation type of stuff. And it's been revealed to these disciples. So why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it's not been given. Well, given by God. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, seeing you shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people, talking about the Jewish people, have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. That's the same thing as 1 Peter chapter 1. Go check out 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to like 12. So, these Jewish, um, specifically Jewish and religious leaders, they don't hear. He's speaking in parables. They don't understand. And doing some a little bit of study and some tracing, and I, that's obviously quoted from Isaiah chapter 6. So, I went back to Isaiah chapter 6 and read it to kind of get a feel and see if there's anything else. A lot of times in the New Testament, they may only give a partial quote. But when they give a partial quote, remember, they're bringing in all of the context from what they, uh, um, from what was back there. And I think like Luke chapter 4 and verses 16 and 18, when Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for his anointing me, does the same thing. He doesn't give all of uh, that quote from Isaiah 61, but he brings in the whole context. The same thing here. Jesus doesn't quote all of Isaiah 6, but if you go back to Isaiah 6, Let's see what else is in Isaiah 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and, their, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and return and be healed. That's exactly what Jesus quoted. Then it continues in verse 11 in Isaiah 6. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are laid waste without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. But yet a tenth will be in it, and will return, and be for consuming, as a terebinth tree or as an oak, whose stump remains when it is cut down, so the holy seed shall be its stump. Look, preach it until there's a destruction upon this land, but there will be a remnant who will be saved. What a beautiful story. Same picture of the New Testament. That's exactly what the New Testament pictures. When Paul's on trial before some uh, Jewish leaders at the end of the book of Acts, so he's taken away, he's carried away to Rome. That's pictured as the end of the earth uh, to them. He is on trial here. And I want to read a little bit about this, just here towards the end of the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 28, picking up in verse 23. It says, so when, he, when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God. Remember, we had a physical structure kingdom. It's gone. We've got a spiritual kingdom being built. Jesus, the chief cornerstone, built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets. It's important to note that what Paul taught was found in the Old Testament. 
he didn't come up with something new. He taught the Old Testament from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by things that which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had, had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, back to Isaiah 6, Go tell this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. Both Jesus and Paul apply Isaiah chapter 6 to the Jews in the first century. That means that the city being laid waste and desolate in inhabitants also applies to the Jews in the first century and the destruction of Jerusalem so that the physical kingdom has been cut off and divorced and there is a wedding that will take place to the spiritual bride and kingdom at that time. I need to do a video on Matthew 22 which talks about the wedding at the time of um, the destruction. Let me read verse 28 here to close out the book of Acts. Therefore let it be known to you, that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Oh, I'm sure they had a great dispute. You know why I think they had a great dispute? Because they knew the end of that prophecy. <laughs> if you don't hear it and don't heed the words of Messiah in this spiritual kingdom that comes from heaven, then there's going to be desolation that comes. And I think that connects together things really, really well for us. And Isaiah 6 is probably a, a little bit of a bigger prophecy than I originally had realized. If you go back and check some of the abomination of desolation thoughts out in Matthew 24, 15 and in Luke 21, 20, then you'll make some connections to how this desolation is connected to uh, a destruction on the city. It all ties in perfectly. Look, this book is marvelous. It's a great story. God's telling the story of redemption through Christ Jesus and the spiritual kingdom and how great it is. Um, I need to do an Abomination of Desolation video too. I've got some things typed out on that, so hopefully I'll get to it. Have a great week. Uh, we got a lot of things going on around here. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for following the ministry. Hope it's a blessing to you. Take care.